once little man's in in the in the co captain seat. Uh, sometimes I I lose a bit of my steering ability. So uh, so I go and I get my mobility work in first. I go and I take care of my body, and I call it I call it adventure prep. So when I'm taking my clients through our mobility. I call it adventure prep because whatever your adventure is, there are prerequisites. There's preparation that needs to be done for you to be able to do it well. So, uh, Mike, mobility expert extraordinaire, what is the absolute best way for a new father to hold a baby? Oh, I like this question. That's a, that's a fun question. Um, so I would say the best way to hold a baby is all the ways, um, like for me, um, for me, and I've really noticed it's like, man, you're a little guy, but whenever you want me to hold you all day. Like you get heavy, you get heavy fast. That 30 pounds gets heavy quick. Uh, So I make it a game. It's like, hey, how many different ways can I hold you? You know, let me hold you on this hip sometimes. Let me switch and hold you on this hip. Let me throw you over my shoulder, you know. Uh, Let me turn you around and pack you like a football. Let me carry you with both arms. Uh, Let me put you on my shoulders. Sometimes I'll be sitting there and I'll I'll grab him by his butt and his belly and I'll just throw him overhead and just hang out when he just fly him like a little airplane. Uh, so I think as far as your, our bodies go, just like if you're someone who works at a desk or a computer, the best way that you can work at a desk or a computer is to move around, you know? So while we're sitting here talking throughout this show, you'll probably notice me changing positions every so often. Uh, I'm not, I didn't drink five cups of coffee and I'm not like super, you know, jacked up. And so I have to move. I'm moving cause it's just, it's what's nice for our bodies. So when it comes to carrying your kid, carry them in as many ways as possible. And you'll probably notice your body saying, thank you so much. Cause if you have that one hip that you're just always hiked out and carrying that kid on you, they're only always on this hip. You more than likely, it doesn't take much time before you start feeling the, the aches and pains of, uh, of how our bodies, um, how our bodies handle that. It just, you start getting locked up in that position and it's no bueno. It's gotta be fun for, uh, the son or the daughter as well. Cause they're like, Oh, daddy's body. It's a playground. Let's go. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. playtime. That's it's playtime. He awesome. loves the air. He, he loves airplane mode. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's so, it's so interesting. Uh, my youngest now, she does not like it. She does not like really? that at all. No, she's just built very differently. My first daughter, super adventurous, wanted to be, didn't, uh, didn't like being tossed, like even mm-hmm. light tossing, didn't like it, but loved airplane mode, loved being lifted, that kind of jazz, different perspectives. Uh, loved, I, you know, we're both tall, like, I'm six one. You're, I think you're taller than me. So yeah, six five. Yeah, there you go, six five. So like, our perspective is completely different, and it's uh, it's really interesting uh, talking to my daughter about that. About like, I'm well above the average height. Mom is mom's the average height. So because she's like, how tall am I going to grow? And I'm like, well, let's see. Eat your protein. Eat your veggies. We'll see. Yeah, you got some good genes. Yeah, got some genes. <laughs> let's see where it goes. How old are your How old are your kids? Got it. Ten turning eleven. And then four months. 10, 11, four months. Yeah. Right yeah. It's been a wild ride. It's been a wild ride. So those are two very different age, two very different age, age ranges. Two very different needs. How about, how about yours? So Linux is one. So he turned one in September. Nice. Nice. So 16 awesome. months, something like that. I'm still not good at the months thing. People ask me how old he is. I'm like, oh, he's one. Whenever he was eight months, he's one. Whenever he's 16 months, he's one. And they're like, no, but like, how many, how, like, how many months is he? I'm like, uh, six, uh, 15 or 16 or 17. One of those three. <laughs> you should, uh, as a joke, you should throw in like 15 months, three weeks, 20 days, 10 hours. Uh-huh. And they'll be like, whoa. And... 32 seconds, 33 seconds. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Create that experience. That's awesome. What, what do you love about, uh, this new, this is a new experience for you. So there's, there's an entire backstory we're talking about off air. So, I mean, what are you loving right now? Hmm. 
I am loving, I love that little dude, like that first and foremost, I love him, he's awesome, and uh, right now, I'm really enjoying just seeing how he socializes, so whenever, uh, you know, whenever there's somebody else in the mix, seeing how he socializes, how he interacts with the world around him, that's one thing from the very beginning, just watching him interact with the world, whether it's people or just what's in this room, seeing him and his mind just like, oh my gosh, what is this? This is incredible. What the heck? It makes noises. Uh, you know, like just seeing him just in his mind, just like, oh wow, I can bend this and I can <laughs> hit myself in the head with this and it doesn't hurt. Um, seeing him interact with the world has been a blast from the very beginning because for me, it's like, the whole world is new for me too. It's brand new for him. And when I get to see it through his eyes, it's brand new for me too. Uh, so I've really tried to slow down, um, to slow down and allow myself to, to just be in that, that newness with him and with, with him through his eyes. Uh, but here lately, it's been watching him socialize and watching him interact with other people. And um, so I, um, me and his mom aren't together so initially he spent the, the all of his time with her and we did the court thing and I got we got split custody and so we worked our way into him spending split time with me um when I first started having him over and having time with him by myself you could tell he was very much he was comfortable with me but if there was anybody else in the room if you walked in the room he was going to be like who the heck is this and why are you here and when are you leaving um and um uh, you know so just seeing him and go from a place of very much reserved and not comfortable with anybody else around to now um being very socialized you know he go i'll take him to play volleyball with me and there will be all kinds of people from all different walks of life quiet people loud people um kids that are his age to kids that are, you know, 10, 12 years old. So they're a big range of people. Um, he was not comfortable in that space at first. Like I had to really like kind of give him small doses of, of that environment first. Now I take him in there and he's like, put me down, dad. Like it is time to run around. Uh, so I've really enjoyed just watching him learn to socialize and kind of break out of his shell. For the feel good fathers out there that might be in a similar situation of uh, no custody, no visitation, right? Separation from mom. Um, what was it? What was it that kept you grounded through the process? And uh, what what did you keep in mind as you were moving towards your goals? Mm. I would say the thing that I kept in mind most is I'm like, I'm going to know my son. My son is going to know me, I'm going to be a part of his life, you know? So like in the beginning, whenever it was a, a, a bit rough, it's like, Hey, you know what? Like it can be rough. It can be hard right now. Um, I'm going to know my son, you know? And I would say for me, <clears throat> having other dads, having other dads and moms in my life that could give me their perspective on how it was for them. So, Hey, you know, I, I had my, my buddy fought to, um, he's one that I could say really was beside me during, during the, the, the whole, the whole process. But, you know, he was just like, bro, like, go get you a lawyer, go get you a lawyer and, and just get this thing figured out. Um, having outside sources, you know, people who have gone through similar, uh, it was very, very helpful. Um, I didn't meet my dad until I was thir 30 years old, 30 ish. Um, so for me, I really held on to that too. You know, that was something that was like, you know, my son, I don't want my son, I don't want my son to have to go through that. I want my son to know me. Um, so that was something I definitely held as, as we were going through that process. And then at the same time, um, for me, I tried to hold a, um, a patience and as much understanding as I could because for his mom it's like she for the first time ever she has two kids with her uh, with her ex-husband um, she for the first time is having 
to if if I'm going to be dad, if I'm allowed to be dad and have equal time, that means she has to give away some of the time that she's used to getting. So, you know, I tried to remind myself, hey, you know, this is going to be tough for her. This is going to be tough for her. And um, I want to make sure to be kind and to be soft and understanding uh, in, in the process of that. And firm and firm on your goals. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Super clear. Uh, love the, you open with this idea of community and having this great group of, of friends. Part of it, it sounded like there was like this mentorship idea of people around you that had either been through something similar or that had your back. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the importance uh, well, actually, and then we'll add another thing, right? That you have this other community that you're bringing your son to that he now feels comfortable with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not dissimilar to, you know, I think of martial arts, you know, martial, the, and, and I know you get this, the physical practice of something with your body and bringing that to your kids and showing them that the, I always think about the physical boundaries of the thing that this controls is mm -hmm. important to understand and move. And, uh, and also having that balance of social groups. I'd love to hear your perspective, even just like, what did you have in place? What did you build afterwards? Like, what does, what does community look like for a, uh, a new co-parenting dad? I think community is huge. Um, because I think that it's very easy to put ourselves in a vacuum and, uh, and, think that our way is the only way and you know this is how it's supposed this is how it's always been done and this is how it's supposed to be done so anything else is you're doing it wrong um travel for me has been uh has been such an important piece um and um what's a good word catalyst for growth in my life. So when I travel, I get to go and I get to see, hey, you know, these people in Australia or these people in Costa Rica or Indonesia, wherever I've traveled, wherever I travel, people do things differently. And sometimes you see somebody's different and it's like, no, that's not for me. But other times you see other people, someone's different way, a different approach to doing something. And you're like, wow, I've been doing that the hard way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been doing that the hard way and I like your way better. Um, yeah. So um, for me, community is uh, community is important for that same reason. Whenever we go and we put ourselves in community, we are opening ourselves up to different, different lifestyles, to different ways of thinking and being. And, you know, so to take my son into a community um, that I know these people, and I know whether they're a Christian or they're uh, a, they're Jewish or they're they're an atheist or they're you know insert whatever belief. I know that they're good people. You know, I know that these people are good people, so my son is safe. Um, so it's a safe environment for my son and myself to get to see other perspectives, other ways of thinking and being. Um, and I think that, uh, I think that's very valuable, very, very valuable, uh, because I don't want to, I don't want to teach my son what to think. I, I would love to teach him how to think for himself. I don't want to tell him how he, who he is supposed to be or how he is supposed to be. I want to help him understand as he grows up how to make his own decisions about that. And I'll be the, the best guide and support and, you know, friend on that journey with him. How is that? Uh, how does that show up in your life for you? Um, and can you can you explain a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So you said um, you don't want to tell him what to think. You want to show him how. Mm -hmm. So how does that manifest for you? So how do you lead from the front in that in that regard? Like what's what's something where, you know, there's people are telling you what to think and you're like, nah, I'm going to think this way. Honestly, um, honestly for me, um, spirituality has been, has been a very, uh, it almost felt like, am I allowed, am I allowed to touch this subject? Um, like, or do I just have to leave that alone and go with what, you know, what, what I've always seen for me, spirituality has been a place where I've really, uh, allowed myself to 
just ask questions, you know, is this really, is this belief really mine or is it something that was given to me or, or made mine? Um, you know, so exploring that conversation has definitely been something that has, uh, been a great practice for me in that, you know, do like going and exploring beliefs, going and exploring thoughts and the rules and the laws that I live my life based on and just asking myself that question, is this mine? Do I really believe this? Do I really want to continue to allow this to steer my life in whatever direction it's steering? Or do I want to course correct? Uh, maybe pieces, maybe pieces of this are mine, but pieces of this aren't. Um, so I think that's definitely been a big area and an area that I am still like, I am no, like I do not have figured out, you know, I just recently started to going to church again. And, um, and I decided after that, the first time I was like, you know what, I want to start being here again, because it feels like peace. Mm. Um, it feels like peace. And I think that peace is something very important to learn to listen to. Does this feel peaceful to, to, does this feel peaceful in here? Uh, if it doesn't, then we have to at least like flag it and, and pay attention to it. Uh, if it doesn't feel like peace. So for me, stepping into church and feeling like, Hey, this feels like a safe space. This feels like peace. Um, that feels like a good place to be while I continue to just hash out and explore that conversation of beliefs and, you know, what is mine and what isn't. What are some places where this has shown up for you specifically the peace element mm -hmm. that you've uh, like, where did you learn that? That's, that's interesting. I heard someone say, follow your bliss. Uh, and that really resonated with me. Follow your bliss. Uh, and I, I kind of took that and, and inserted peace. Like, you know, follow your peace. If it doesn't feel peaceful, if it costs you your peace, then it's way too expensive. Um, and so for me, that's, that's, I think that's probably where that came from. Follow your bliss. I wish I could remember who I heard say that, but I think it was in a book somewhere. That's, that's... <laughs> That's fantastic. If it costs you your piece, it's way too expensive. Way Love it. too expensive. All right, let's get some. Let's get some practical here. How how you like and changing diapers? Still changing diapers, doing that whole thing. Oh, am I? <laughs> oh, am I? Last weekend was diarrhea mania. <laughs> diarrhea mania. Um, man, I do not like changing diapers. Um, I don't know if I'll ever like changing diapers, but it brings up a fun conversation. Um, I noticed, I, I really like over the years, I really learned to pay attention to my thoughts. I think that's maybe the most valuable things we can do as humans is, is just notice and give some thought to our thoughts, give some time to our thoughts. Um, they shape our lives. Uh, if you, you know, if you want to know what your future is going to look like, get, get a good, uh, get a good journal out and just start looking at your thoughts, the things that you're thinking throughout the day. And it'll give you a pretty clear picture of, of where you're going to go. Um, so I noticed I'm in the middle of cha changing this smelly diaper and I'm just like, Oh, I can't, Oh my gosh, it smells horrible. And Oh, it's up your back oh my gosh it's leaking out the sides i wish i didn't have to change these diapers anymore i wish you would stop doing this i wish that you were old enough that you didn't have to poop in your pants and you could go to the bathroom wait a second i'm like wait a second i literally stopped in the middle of changing this nasty diaper and i was like no no, I take that back, buddy. I was like, I don't want you to grow up. I don't want you to grow up any faster than you have to, because when the diapers stop, then, you know, what else goes with it? You know, the, the, after he, after I finish changing his diaper, usually after I change his diaper, I get a, the little, like, oh, yeah, yeah. the little, yeah, pick me up. Cup, no, like for, it's a, give me a hug. For him, it's a come here and give me a hug. And oh my gosh, like I like his little hands on the back of my neck and he does this little like I always scratch his back and rub him and he gives it back. 
I go down there and he's just scratching my, my shoulders and my neck and just giving me little pats and rubs. And I don't want to speed through that. I don't want to speed through that at all. So it's like if I have to pay dirty diapers for wonderful hugs and cuddles and love, then you know what? Bring on the dirty diapers. <laughs> It's something that I've I've really enjoyed that I've been able to maintain for both kids is just the talking through it and having the conversation. I, I I just try and talk to them both, just what I'm doing and just hanging out and just this is just a part of everyday life. And they know, like you know, my youngest now, um, it's a bit fuzzy, ten years ago, but my youngest now, like she knows what's happening. So she's like, legs up, let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> so like starts game. starts to help. <laughs> yep, she's like, all right, let's do it. And, uh, it's, it's, I got the legs, dad. It's fun. The, uh, they're really, they really will follow your lead on the energy of the moment. I remember, uh, for the first, it was just a, you know, a regular slip playing, doing the whole thing. Mom's holding her and then like on her knees or something like that. And it was just like, sit back, didn't catch the sit back kind of thing. And, and we were just kind of talking about it and I said, you know, and, and, so my wife looked at me and I was like, look, just, just be happy at what happened. Like, cause if you, if you freak out, she's going to freak out. She, yeah. I said, the moment it happened, she did the regular, like, uh, like the, you know, little babies, they'll put their arms out and it's like, as a reflex, like catch me. That's what they're, yeah. they're saying. They're saying, catch me, um, reflexively. And, um, but babies will look at mommy for how they're supposed to react. How am I mm -hmm. supposed to react to what just happened? And I was like, Hey, like, just give her a smile, like treat like every day, like nothing, nothing bad happened. It's a carpeted floor. It's okay. <laughs> like it was like from an inch, it's fine. You know, like nothing bad happened and just, Hey, you know, everything's good. And, and then baby one, she was like, yeah, love it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just getting back into it. And, and it was good. They really do. They really will follow your example of the, the back scratching. They really will follow what uh what we do absolutely linux mm -hmm. takes his falls and uh and immediately just looks at me i laugh like he falls and i laugh i'm like buddy like if you're anything like your dad uh you're gonna do some adventurous things you might do some dumb adventurous things you're gonna take your falls your bumps your bruises your scratches so I was like, we're just getting started. Um, so he, he falls and looks at me and he used to fall and just immediately start crying. Now he falls and he looks at me and I'll laugh or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just smile and be goofy with him. And he just, okay, we're, we're supposed to play. Yeah. He fell, get up, dust it off, keep yeah. moving. That's way better. I, I, I always used to, we always used to joke. It was like, they'll let us know when they're really hurt. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. so. They'll let us know when we're really hurt. We had actually our eldest did something recently in the tub and really hurt herself, mm -hmm. and she let us know. And we were like, "Oh, it's like, oh, we're coming. Pay attention to that. <laughs> yep, we're coming. We're doing this. We're, we're here. We're here. You're not alone in this. Uh, funny that. Uh, I'm actually very curious. So I, I I see the I see the the helicopter mom, the Times magazines, all this kind of jazz of like the super yoga mom doing the stretches and like the toddler doing yoga with with the mom. Mm -hmm. And I know like you're a body expert. You're this you're a mobility expert. You're fantastic at what you do, best in the Thank world. You. Thank you. I'm working on it. And do you do this stuff with with Linux, with little one? Absolutely. Usually um usually whenever it's uh, like I I have him for the weekend. So uh, we have every other Wednesday and every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're together. So every weekend we spend together and usually when his mom drops him off to me on those Wednesdays and on those Fridays for our weekends, uh, she drops him off to me at the gym. I go to the gym before, um, partly because it's it's closer to her. So it's like, hey, I'll, you know, I'll meet you in the middle. That way it's a little bit easier for you. But also I go and I get there early and I just get my movement in because I know that's what I can control. Once little man's in, in the in the co-captain seat, uh, sometimes I, I lose a bit of my steering ability. So, uh, so I go and I get my mobility work in first. I go and I take care of my body 
And I call it, I call it adventure prep. So when I'm taking my clients through our mobility, I call it adventure prep because whatever your adventure is, there are prerequisites. There's preparation that needs to be done for you to be able to do it well, uh, for you to be able to do it well and pain free and injury free. Hopefully we can't prevent injuries, but we can mitigate them, uh, you know, for the long run. Um, so I go and I take care of my body and that's my prep. It's like, I'm saying, you know what, I'm doing this for me, but I'm also doing this for my little guy. Having him has definitely given me a new inspiration, a new fire in my belly for how I want to take care of me because it's like, you know what, I want to be the fun, adventurous, playful dad, not just when I'm 40, but when I'm 50, 60, 70, I want to be able to get up and run around with my guy. And when he has kids with his kids, you know, I want to be that grandpa, that great grandpa, if, you know, if it's meant to be. But um, yeah, so I'm there at the gym. I'm getting my mobility in. He shows up usually like right at the, like when I'm finishing up, but I keep going, you know, and I just take it into playtime. So he shows up and it's like, all right, buddy, like we're in the gym. A lot of times there's nobody in here. So he just has free reign and uh, he gets to play. And then it's like, okay, how can I turn this play with him into a beneficial play time for me? Which honestly, like if you, if you're willing to get down and get on the ground with your kids, which I, I like the kids deserve that, you know, they deserve us to get down on their level and to just let them steer the ship uh it's great for your body you know i find myself in the in most interesting positions uh in play time with him uh so for me as somebody who really loves to just think about my body and think about movement as i'm going through that time with him i just notice a lot of times like man this is very valuable this is very valuable time not just with me and my son but this is a valuable time for my body so absolutely, we do lots of movement together. Anything in particular that uh, you would want feel good fathers to know about, like things that they could do for their for their little ones that they could do together, or like mm. I'm I'm not familiar with the 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 mobility of of a one year old. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say that play is something I I read a. Um, I wish I could remember the quote. I think I have a screenshot of it, but I'm, I'm not going to pull that up right now. Basically, the gist of the quote was this, this person saying, I, if I could, if I could speak to the, if I could speak to the fairy, they called it a fairy. If I could speak to the fairy that kid that gives kids a gift upon birth, I would ask that fairy that they would give every kid uh, an unshakable sense of wonder. Um, mm. And, and, uh, and the, the quote went on to just talk about how, like, as we go through life, we start to lose that sense of wonder, because we're told, like, that's childish, or you need to be serious, or, you know, whatever, you know, society kind of wants to lead us towards a certain path, uh, and rigidity. And so to, to wit, to, to instill that in our children, you know, I, I, I wore this shirt today uh, for this and then I put a hoodie on. I just now realized it, but it says explore more. Mm -hmm. It says explore more. I have this shirt and Linux has the same shirt, except his is massive. It's this big, massive explore more, the same symbol, but just huge. And I was like, man, I wish my shirt was your shirt. Um, but um, explore more. That's what I would say to the dads. Go play. Go play and go invest in your kid's sense of wonder and awe. And, uh, and my goal is to always prioritize and invest in Linux's uh, sense of wonder. Uh, and to notice whenever I'm doing things that might stifle that. Because there, I notice there are a lot of times I'm just telling him no. It's like, no, don't touch that. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. And I'm like, wait a second. Like, is this just becoming a habit? Like he's just, he just wants to go and explore. He's exploring the things around him. Do I really want to tell him no all the time? Or maybe, maybe I can let him play with the water bottle, you know, and just make sure he doesn't drop it on his foot. Um, Cause this thing is heavy. Uh, but yeah, just, just a new way of looking at things. I've been, have you heard of, uh, 
is it? Uh, choice. Choice theory parenting. So is it? Yeah, let's go for it. What what is what is choice choice what it choice theory choice theory? Yeah, yeah. So okay. my hallucination of it, my understanding of it is instead of no, um, instead of no, it can be hey, you want to play with the scissors, or we could play with with this. And it's like you can try to play with the scissors and you have to go to your room or you can play with this toy. So it's like a choice. It's instead of saying, no, 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 no. It's, Hey, you have a choice. You can keep hitting, you know, Linux is in a thing right now where he likes to slap. Sometimes he likes to slap or kick or whatever. It's just, you know, there's energy in there, big energy in there. And he's just finding ways to get it out. Um, so it's, Hey, if you keep hitting dad, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. That's that's not nice. That's not gentle. You can keep hitting me and you'll have to go and sit in your room. Or or we can we can color or we can roll around or we can go outside, you know. Um so choice theory. I'm excited to dive more into that. I was listening to um Brene Brown talk about it. Mm. Uh, on um, Russell Brand's podcast, and uh, and it was a fun listen to to hear them talk through that. Yeah, I was the 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 I can see the redirection being super helpful. I think from a feel good father perspective, you know, I I love that you with your example you brought in like a consequence. Mm -hmm. You know, like hey, you can choose to play with the scissors, and you could get hurt because they're dangerous. Um, or you could play with this roll of paper towels or I mean, who knows, whatever, or like this cuddly, um, or you can keep hitting me because and it doesn't, the consequence of your action is this, like the consequence yeah. is it's hurting me. It doesn't feel great. And you can do this next thing. Mm -hmm. I definitely like this whole, um, I definitely like the consequence element of it. Like even yeah. the positive thing, like, Hey, you can do this and this is the consequence, you know, here's the negative consequence or. You can do this and we'll have fun together or something like that. Yeah. I love that. I'm not sure if I like the pure, like, here's another choice. It feels more, you know, like, I'm not sure if I like that, but it's okay because we're both going to research it. I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate absolutely. the info. I'm definitely going to look at that. They were speaking about it from a, uh, from a spanking your kid mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. So it's like, instead of, she was saying, instead of spanking, um, it's choice. It's like, Hey, you know, um, if you keep doing this thing that isn't nice and doesn't feel good to, you know, it doesn't feel good to me. It's not nice. I don't want you to go to school and hit kids. You know, if you keep doing that, then there's going to be consequences or we can do this fun thing that you want to have, that you want to do, or that you want to have. I love it. I mean, Brene Brown, right? I, She's I awesome. Love that. Yeah. Have you seen her new book, Atlas of the Heart? Yeah, I'm listening to it. Yeah, what's uh, your what's your what's your takeaway? Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, is my takeaway. <laughs> uh, she's incredible. I've never I've never had a book. Um, are you are you watching the the Netflix series or the HBO series or are you listening to the a podcast? Audio book. Okay, but audio book. I will definitely watch the uh, the Netflix or the yes. HBO. Yeah, HBO, HBO. It's a series, and so it's really cool seeing just audience interaction when it comes mm -hmm. to this stuff because she's got an audience of people, uh, and they do it differently. You know, most shows, most talk shows, just mainly see the the host speaking but she was like i really need for people to see the audience so it's a very conversational between her and the audience and the the topics that she's speaking about and basically for for you know da dads that are listening she's speaking about different emotions um she's speaking about different emotions and emotional intelligence is so so important most of us only have a few places that we know how to go to it's like I can either be happy or I can be angry. I'm like we got one or the two, one or the other. I can be happy, I can be serious, or I can be angry. Um, you know, so to go and to equip ourselves with with other emotional places to go to and, and an understanding of those things, uh, it's so important 
um, you know, um, this is a, a deeper conversation, but men are men and the suicide statistic is, uh, it's, it's tragic. And, you know, I think it's because we've been told that we aren't allowed to feel, we aren't allowed to show emotion. We have to be the stoic, you know, I'm the leader and I can handle everything by myself. I don't need to talk about my emotions or show my emotions. I've got this all on my own, put it all on my back. Uh, that is not how we're meant to do life. And, uh, and I think it's a toxic way of going about life. And that's why men, uh, men are so dramatically leading the suicide rate statistics. Um, but anyways, Atlas of the heart. It's a wonderful toolbox of, of emotional intelligence. I don't, I don't mind going to the, the suicide stuff, right? That's, that's okay. It's a good thing to talk about for feel good fathers, right? Um, something like 60% of most suicides are uh, relationship rel related. So, um, as always, if this is you and you're a feel good father or you're anybody and you listen to this and this is an issue, I'll put a, a link to the suicide hotline down in the description. Please go ahead and give it a call. Uh, folks want to hear what you have to say. Uh, but the next piece, right? Um, I love that idea of exploring it. And so having a, per, a set of permissions to have a, a variety of emotions you can feel. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we talked about um, the challenge. We've talked about, you, you talked about here dealing with frustration. You said peace. Peace is another emotion, that calm, that temperance all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> there's lots of, uh, there it is. There it is. Uh, as promised folks, he is now moving. He has moved his body. He's, he's getting this stuff going. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny. Cause as we're, as we're sitting here too, I am moving my hips to, to same, make sure that that, that blood it's is like, I don't know if anybody can see this, but I'm over here getting my little spine work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that little moment of brevity for, for the important piece, but, uh, you know, the other big, the other big, big, big thing is that, um, it's important for feel good fathers to have community. We've talked about this here and, um, it's important for men in particular to stand shoulder to shoulder with other men. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you go and you, um, emotion vomit on other people. If that's what, if you have places where that is safe, then go ahead and do that. But sometimes just making sure that you're not isolated, making sure that when you're going through tough stuff, that you have people that you can lean on, that you have things to do, you have a variety of communities you can engage with, that's going to be the, the saving grace. The, the reason why the men's suicide rate is higher than uh, the women's, 4X is likely. 4X is likely to complete um, about even to attempt um, is that uh, she will reach out for help and he will yep. not. And that's the fundamental difference. They got so he spirals down. That they go. Mm-hmm. Safe spaces down. to go and just talk about, hey, I'm feeling this, I'm experiencing this. Uh, and I think it's so important to have that because if we allow ourselves to go and talk to that good friend, that trust, that trusted companion, you know, if we allow ourselves in that tough time to go and say, hey, I'm having these thoughts or I'm experiencing this emotion or whatever, a lot of the times, um, what we're going to get is a me too, or a man, I've, I've been there. And that can bring so much hope to a dark moment to just understand that, oh, wait, I'm not the only one that struggles with this or has struggled with this. I'm not alone. Okay. The key is that the, the monster in the closet, the thing that's under your bed, that thing in the dark, the wolf in the darkness, the eyes are looking at you from the forest. It's all in the dark. You don't know what it is. You can't see it. And once you shine a light on it, it's something you can deal with. You can acknowledge yep. it. Winston Churchill struggled, struggled. One of my heroes struggled with depression his whole life. Gave it a name. Gave it light. Called it Black Dog. Right? Winston Churchill and Black Dog. And hmm. then he had a name for it. And he could say, ah, that's Black Dog. Black Dog is coming around right now. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get going. So there's hope. There is, there are solutions and, um, don't go alone. Yeah, absolutely. Once you, fires. once you shine that light on it, it's probably as big as it's ever going to be. Once you get bold enough to just take that light and shine it on the thing and see it once and for all in that moment, it's probably as big as it can, as it's going to get. 
Um, and you at that point get to keep growing and equipping yourself with, with the friends to, to climb the mountain with, to overcome the mountain with the knowledge and the tools and the understanding to, to go and take that black dog and, uh, either send it off on its way forever or to, you know, some things we're not going to get rid of, you know, some things it's going to be that black dog is going to become some, somebody that walks by our side forever. Uh, we just don't have to allow the the black dog, the the scary thing in the closet, the eyes in the woods to steer our ship through life. You know, if if they're steering our ship, then uh, we're probably not going to go to the places we would love to go. We're probably not going to go to the peace, peaceful places. Uh, but if we can have that understanding of, hey, I know who you are. I know what you are. I understand you more and more. Um, you can come along, but you're not gonna you're not gonna put your hands on the steering wheel. I heard someone talk about fear this way. It's like we're never gonna get rid of fear. We're not supposed to get rid of fear. Fear is a very useful tool once we learn to understand it and see it for who, for who it is, what it is. Um, so it can sit in the back seat, and sometimes we can give it an ear, uh, but we don't allow it to to steer the ship anymore. That's um. Eat, pray, love. Uh, that's the author of Eat, Pray, Love, um, and then it's uh, something magic. Is the, is the word is where she was talking about that a lot. I, hmm. uh, please, I've never please read forgive it. me. Uh, it'll be it'll be in the card that's going to show up right here. There. <laughs> I've <laughs> I've never read Eat, Pray, Love. I've heard I've heard people talk about it, and everybody asked me if I moved to Indonesia. I moved to Bali, and everybody like, did you go, did you go because you watched Eat, Pray, Love? Um, like what's that <laughs> check out the she's got a good ted talk talks okay. about it talks about her muse that's that's good stuff um does emotion sit in the body is emotion absolutely i think so um yeah i think so uh, what are what are some things that again i want to bring it back to your your expertise right what are like what are some things that feel good fathers can kind of pay attention to like what what advice do we have for us for hmm. feel good fathers? That's a fun. That's a fun one. I think emotion sits in the body. I do. I do believe that. I don't have the 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 literature, you know, the the science to to say, hey, you know, so and so proved with these studies. Um, it's a feeling, you know. It's a feeling um, when something feels like peace. I feel it when something doesn't feel like peace. I feel it. Um, um, so I think along with the emotional intelligence thing, um, to be able to get a clearer and clearer understanding of our emotions and how they show up and why they show up. Um, as you get a clear understanding of those things, you start to understand how emotions sit in the body. What does it feel like to feel joy? What does it feel like to feel wonder and awe? Um, what does it feel like to feel shame? What does it feel like to feel embarrassed? What does it feel like to feel angry? You know, where does that sit in your body? For me, when I'm angry, it usually is just, it's nasty and it's down here. Um, whenever I feel, whenever I feel wonder, hmm, it's like this full body, like, like, Oh, like from my soul, like if I could, if I could point to my soul, it's just like everything. When I feel love, it feels warm in here. Um, when I feel shame, a lot of times it's, I feel it in my belly, but it's really in here. It's like how I'm thinking about something, you know, I'm making something shameful. Um, so I think that as we get a, a higher emotional IQ, we start to understand how we feel those emotions. Uh, and then what it all comes back to is, is what we're thinking. Uh, like we talked about earlier, exploring and learning to look at your thoughts. Uh, and, and I think it's really important to write them down because our mind is really good at like taking that uncomfortable thought and just, oh, get that out of here. That doesn't, that's not comfortable. Get that out of here. Um, you know, I think it's really important to write these thoughts down because you'll probably notice that there are thoughts that are recurring 
and their dominant thoughts. It's like, man, this is a thought that I thought about a lot of times today or a lot of times this week, this month, this year. Um, spending time with those thoughts and then understanding where they come from. Um, you know, whenever I have this thought come up, what does it make me feel? And when I feel that way, what kind of actions do I take or do I not take? And when I take those actions or I don't take those actions, what result am I producing? You know, um, there's a, um, what's her name? Um, I can't remember the coach's name, um, but she's got a really cool tool that walks you through that. Um, and it's called the model and it's um, C-T-F-A-R, circumstances, thoughts, feelings, actions, results. So C-T-F-A-R, you have circumstances uh, and circumstances are, they're neutral, you know, it's raining outside. That's a circumstance. Um, it, it's not good or bad until I have a thought about it. So mm -hmm. if it's raining outside and, oh, I hate getting wet, wet socks are the worst, gives me a feeling. Uh, so the thought about the circumstance gives me a feeling. I hate wet socks. The feeling is I'm angry. It's raining outside and I hate that it's raining outside. What are the actions that I take because I'm angry? You know, mm. somebody comes in and says something that maybe on a normal day wouldn't bother me. But now because I'm angry because it's raining and I can't do anything about it, I say something or I do something that I wouldn't normally do. Uh, and the result of that is I've hurt this person's feelings or I've ruined a business relationship or, you know, wherever that goes. So that model has been a very, very useful one for me in taking my thoughts and then having a way to explore them and decide, do I want to keep this thought? Do I want to keep this belief or do I want to choose something different? Do I want to go a different direction? Got it. Got it. Love it. So that's kind of taking a look at the internal of, of here, like your, your brain, your mind, and then like, uh, expressing, like, how are you expressing all that stuff externally to you? So your mobility expert and what is the, for a father, like for, for your, the men in your, your life that you work with, what, like what's one common major mobility exercise that you do that impacts like that most of them come through that, you know, that would have an impact on them if they did. Um, I think hip mobility, mm. I think hip mobility, because um, most people that come in at now currently, or they have, or it's occasional back pain, um, uh, the occurrence of back pain in our, in our country is just, it's just on the rise, on the rise, on the rise, because most, uh, most people have jobs that they need to sit for. Um, they sit at work. They sit in the car going to and from work. They go home, they sit and eat, they sit and watch TV, and they go to bed and wake up and do it again. Um, so most people are sitting, which means their hips are in the same position all day long. Um, and that's why variety and play is important. Like we talked about earlier, just giving your body a, a variety of movement, of playful movement. That's such a simple place to start. As long as it feels good, feels good fatherhood. Um, as long as it feels good, it's not painful, go and explore movement. Um, if, you know, if you're someone who has not moved in a long time, you might, you've got, you're probably going to be limited in the options that you have pain-free. Go and explore and use what you have pain-free. Um, and over time, um, you might notice that starts to expand. If you come to me and you say, hey, I want help expanding this stuff. I want help speeding up this process of taking back my options. You know, as we sit and we don't use this vehicle that we have, the options that it has available to it shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink until we go from having a, a wonderful body that's made to play and explore and thrive to a mummified capsule of a shell of a human that used to be you know so going and taking back those options is our responsibility nobody can do it for us um so daily movement daily movement and um i i prescribe all my clients a, a daily mobility routine that is meant to keep what you have it's like hey at least your job is at least keep what you have 
And then there's work we can do to go and start pushing back against those walls that want to close down and take back what, uh, you know, what we were, what we were meant to have. If folks want to figure this out and folks want to, want to contact you and feel good fathers want to increase mobility, work on their hips. Uh, it, it works. It helps. Uh, I've worked with Mike. Absolutely. Where can they go? Um, I would say Facebook or Instagram is a great place to go. I'm fire life, Mike fire life mike on instagram and then it's mike gardner on uh on facebook i'm in the process of of building a mobility platform and community so that'll be available soon jay knows what's up um so uh, that'll be available soon but for right now um facebook and instagram are great places to go and connect and then i offer in-person uh training i offer virtual training um and I've even got a little Facebook community that I've been growing up in the meantime, while that app and while that other platform is in, in its, you know, in its birth birthing phase. Um, I'm, I've been putting classes and content on there to just teach people how to take back their, uh, their vitality. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. <laughs> Yo, what's up friends. If you enjoyed this conversation with myself, and Jay, then click on that link up there or over there. Let's see. One of those places. Click on that link and uh, come hang out, listen to some more conversations. Maybe, maybe you will be on one of these future conversations. Mm, good call. Good call. And thanks, Feel Good Father, for tuning in. If, you're, if you look there, right about there, there'll be another one. There'll be another, another conversation. YouTube has decided that video, it's the next one for you. This is the one you got to click on right there. Click it, click it, click it. Okay, thanks a lot.